Thank you very much. So, hello everyone. Welcome to the track three, physical and medical sciences of the in for OB virtual summit. Uh, right now we are in theme one, models of learning, moving from principles to practices. So here we have the world leader in medical education, Professor Ronald M. Harden. He started his career as endocrinologist before moving to the full-time medical education. His current affiliations include Emeritus Professor of Medical Education at University of Dundee, Editor of Journal Medical Teacher, and General Secretary and the Treasurer of the Association for Medical Education in Europe. He is committed to promoting excellence in medical education through the development of new approaches. The ideas which he has pioneered include the objective structured clinical examination, the spiral curriculum, and the SPICES model for curriculum planning. He has published more than 400 papers in leading journals and several books in the domain of medical education. His contributions to excellence in medical education have attracted numerous awards, including the Karolinska Institute Prize, which has been equated to the Nobel Prize for Medical Education. He also received Guzzi Peace Prize for services in medical education. He is also awarded the several honorary degree of doctorate, including the University in Malaysia and University of Tampere, Finland. So over to you, Professor Ronald M. Harden. Thank you very much indeed for this very kind introduction. I'm absolutely delighted to be able to take part in what I think is a very important meeting on a key topic in medical and other education. Um, I've chosen as the theme this move to authentic and adaptive learning as an example of a move from the theories of outcome-based education. What does it mean for practice, which is what we're discussing in this session? These are difficult times we're living in. Uh, the Court of Journal of Medicine, for example, talked about the implications of the COVID pandemic uh, for us all, for the society, for health and importantly for education. And the Times Higher Education recently featured this, the future is still downloading, the future is still downloading. These are changing times in, in, medical, in medical education. Another issue pointed out that the COVID pandemic offers universities a once in a generation opportunity to put their dysfunctional strategies behind them. We should think again about what we're doing. And in another feature, it suggested even that this coronavirus crisis, because it is a crisis, but it's a chance to radically remake higher education. So we're thinking again about what we're doing as a result of this crisis. There's an interesting article by Diana Wayne from Chicago. She's an emergency physician. And she noted during the pandemic that the situation with regard to the trainees was rather different. In the past, she'd concentrated on this practice skills they needed and the knowledge they needed. But then she found that during the pandemic, of course, skills and knowledge were important. But also she said, much more important or as important was resilience, grit, tolerance of uncertainty, response to unexpected events, and even, she said, kindness. And she said, I really need to rethink my training program. So, of course, it will cover skills and knowledge, but also out the outcomes expected of my training program have to be resilience, grit, tolerance of uncertainty, response to unexpected events, and even kindness. So it's made me rethink what are the outcomes of my training program for emergency physicians. So it raises the question, what should a student learn? Uh, and in medicine and in other areas too, one of the big problems of information overload. There's now more than 60,000 diagnoses in medicine, more than 6,000 interventions. What do we expect students to learn all of these? I think it's made us think about outcome-based education. What are the outcomes? We've concentrated in the past very much on the process, the number of lectures we give, the educational strategies. 
But now we're thinking much more, what is the product? What are we expecting students to learn? And in Scotland, the Scottish deans got together and agreed what were the learning outcomes for a Scottish doctor. And of course, they would have technical outcomes with this three-circle model in the centre. Was that the student on qualifying should be able to do the right thing? The clinical skills, the practical procedures, investigations, patient management, health promotion, communication, and information handling. All technical skills, but it's not just a technician we're looking for in a doctor. And in the next circle, it's how the doctor does the thing. Does the doctor do it right? Does he do it with the right scientific understanding. That's why we have the anatomy and the physiology and so on. Does he do it with the right attitudes? Does he do it with the right decision making and working as a member of a team? So how does he apply these technical competencies? And then in the outer circle, how does the doctor keep himself up to date? Is the right person doing it? So this think of what is it we're expecting in terms of the outcomes? So the principle is clear. We do need to think about the outcomes, but I wanted to give some examples of what this means for practice. Outcome-based education, two examples in practice. I think it's made us think in medicine much more. How can we, if we believe these outcomes as I've been suggesting in medicine, how do we deliver authentic learning, move much more authentic learning, much more concern of relevance, much more concerned with relevance. So, from talking of the real world, I don't know whether you can hear the music or not, but this is the, the real world. We should learn in the real world. And in this book by Seymour Saracen, it had this challenging title. And what do you mean by learning? We talk, our aim in schools is for our students to learn. But what do we mean by learning? Do we mean by learning, he challenged us, is it simply to obtain high grades in tests and examinations? And what I think we're now thinking, we need to think about in this authentic curriculum. Is it be a better doctor after graduation? Authentic learning. Will the learning result in our, doctor, in our students become better doctors after graduation? authentic learning. And we've switched our curriculum much more towards, for example, task-based learning. Task-based learning, we've published papers describing how this is very appropriate. It helps to result in integration and problem-based learning. And for example, this diagram, if you take one of the tasks, management of abdominal pain, to the different attachments, the student goes through the clerkship, psychiatry, surgery, general medicine, child health, and you can see at the top how in each of these clerkships, in each of these tasks, there are any outcomes associated with that task. So in managing a patient of abdominal pain in each of these attachments, what clinical skills does he learn? What practical procedures? What communication skills and attitudes and ethics? So it's a way of to point, planning a blueprint of the student's program. And these are the 104 clinical presentations. So on day one as Dean, when I met the students, I said, five years from now in qualifying, you'll be able to manage these 104 presentations. And everything you do in all the lessons, think of what are the learning outcomes related to these each of these tasks. And other schools have chosen different ses sets of clinical presentations to build the curriculum around. So outcome-based education has led to this thinking much more of authentic learning and these blueprints to help guide the students' learning. I think the second principle it has led to in practice is the notion of adaptive learning. Adaptive learning, away from the motion we had in the past that students are almost going through a curriculum as a factory being processed all the same, although we might try to do it a little differently and they come out the other end as doctor, nurse, or whatever. And we forget that the students are all individual, each has their individual requirements. My own background, as you heard, was as an endocrinologist in my clinic, um, in my waiting room to see me, would be patient with thyroid disease. Some would require radioactive iodine, some antithyroid drugs, some surgery. Each required their own specific treatment. Each was different. And I think sometimes we forget that each of our students are different and each require their own individual learning program. 
moving away from the notion of one size fits all to much more the notion of adaptive learning. And that's been made possible with this move to outcome-based education. Um, an important study in the States, Education Physicians, was by the Carnegie Foundation, her four recommendations. The first was that we should standardize the learning outcomes and competencies. So, so we should put more emphasis on the outcomes and competencies in the curriculum. But secondly, they went on to say, and then this we would allow us to provide greater opportunities for individualizing the learning experience for students and residents. We could individualize the learning to suit individual students. We'd have a curriculum where the education program and the teaching and learning methods adapted to the individual's personal learning needs, rather than the traditional approach where it's not the program adapts, but we expect the student or, or trainee to adapt to the program with a uniform or standard approach to teaching and learning. The outcome-based education has let us adopt the former where the program adapts to the students' needs. Uh, we see this elsewhere. I was in London recently and I saw there was this advertisement board. It was featured in this article, in fact, in the paper. And as I approached it, it suddenly changed its picture and showed an advert that I was interested in. And depending on who approached the board, it put up a picture of an advert that might be relevant to that person. Uh, one example of adapting, and we see this in all walks of life, where it's buying new computers or cars or whatever, adapting to suit the individual's needs. And the same is true in education. Here's two of our students in Dundee working through an online program on the cardiovascular system, and they have choices. They can choose, do they want to work individually or as these students chose to do in a pair? Can they choose to use the self-assessment that was part of the program at the beginning to see what they should learn or do they want to use it at the end of the program to see what they have learned? Do they want to study the program, use the text on the screen, or do they want to listen to an audio commentary? They can decide when they want to study and how do they want to study and in terms of the depth of study, uh, personalizing the learning to their individual individual needs. So I've suggested that we have a move as a result of outcome-based education to authentic and adaptive learning. Outcome-based education, in fact, I've even suggested in this equation, you can see outcome-based education equals authentic and mastery learning plus adaptive learning, uh, one equation for outcome-based education. It's authentic and mastery learning to plus adaptive learning. This is a, a, a picture from the Dead Poet Society. I don't know whether the sound's coming through. Can you hear the sound? No, the He's sound, asking you the, the sound is not hear the world very differently from up here. He says, come up and join me on the stairs. The world's looking very differently. He said, we should look at things. We should look at things in another way. And I think the challenge in education is to look at things in another way. In the past, we've looked at it very much from a process perspective. The number of lectures, which educational strategies, how long each class lasts. We should be looking much more in a different way to the product and to the notion of learning outcomes. These are exciting times in medical education and in other fields of education. And a key feature of these exciting times, I believe, probably the most important feature is the move to outcome-based education. Outcome-based education that leads to authentic learning, relevant letter learning, training better doctors, and adaptive learning meeting the needs of individual students. A move to authentic and adaptive learning in health professions education. Thank you much again for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to participate in this important 
well-organized conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Ronald Harden, for the detailed insight in, into the uh, authentic and the adoptive learning uh, practices in the health professions education. Thanks a lot.